Okay, let's talk a little bit about you being the chair of Brave Like oh, Gabe yeah. Foundation. Uh, so how you, it looks like you have a, a quite a big team working working with the Brave Like Gabe Foundation now. So maybe tell us. Let, let's start. How about this? Let's start with the origin story to some extent. Uh, so how did how did this idea come about? And then maybe tell the listeners that haven't heard uh, about the story of meeting Chip Gaines <laughs> as well in uh, Central Park. Yeah. So kind of long, medium story, as short as I can make it. Gabriel Grunwald, my wife, had a rare cancer, adenoid cystic carcinoma. She was diagnosed in 2009, I believe. But we were both in college at the University of Minnesota. She Googled it. We both Googled it. You should never Google things, although the doctors weren't a ton more helpful because there was just no data on it. But there were zero clinical trials, zero approved treatments, zero anything for this cancer. And five-year survival looked good. Ten-year survival didn't look good. She ran professionally, was a world beater, 10th mm -hmm. fastest American at the time when she left the sport. But later in life, after the 2016 trials, probably 20, she had this big tumor in her liver, then started some chemo, then a clinical trial. And when she was doing her clinical trial, she's still running, getting fitter, getting faster, crushing workouts. But she's like, it's just not for sure sustainable. So I want to find something else. So she decided to start the Brave Like Gabe Foundation. And whether you believe in whatever you believe in, things happening by chance or things happening. Serendipity. Yeah. 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 But we're in New York. She's on a clinical trial. She had just ended the clinical trial, meaning like her tumors were still growing on this dual immunotherapy treatment, which we'd go there every other week for six months. It was like very taxing. I was in residency or had just finished residency. I don't even know the exact timeline, but I was starting to kind of train for ultras because she was like, you should run more. And I'm like, okay. So Central Park is this 10K loop essentially. Mm -hmm. So I go out, do my first 10K loop. Then I'm going to grab her, yeah. do our 10K loop together. She was just having an easy day. Finishing my loop, I'm at the corner by where we stay. And there's this guy sitting on a bench and he yells at me. He's like, you look fast. And I'm like, Thanks, Central Park guy. Like, keep running. <laughs> He's like, how long would it take a fat ass like me to run a marathon? And I'm like, do you mean like years or minutes or mo like? Yeah. He's like, how long to train? And I, he claims I just like raised four fingers and ran okay. away. But I'm like, four months. Like, I think anyone that's capable could probably train for a marathon yeah. in four months. So I grab Gabriel. She's waiting for her watch to get satellites. We're standing there. And this guy yells at me again. He's like, hey, it's the fast guy again. I'm like, oh my gosh. This like guy in cowboy boots and a suit. And she's like, Chip. And I'm like, oh, like literally in my head. I'm like, he's a fan of yours or he like follows you on Instagram. Right, so he's right. like toying with me. She's like, you know, Chip, like I make you, make you watch HGTV, fix her up here. And I'm like, that's like when I'm like, having a beer after we're completely yeah, zoned yeah. out. But he talks. He's like, it's an incredible scar. We take a picture together. She Instagrams it. He like follows her, reads her story. And he's like, I asked your husband, like how long for me to run a marathon? I want to run a marathon. I want you to coach me. I want to put on a marathon in Waco and I want to give you all the money. That's insane. And yeah. she's like, wow. Like, and then that was the bigger version of the Kickstarter to get Brave Like Gabe right. Foundation going. He handed her, I think, a jumbo check with $250,000 to the Brave Like Gabe Foundation. It's a very nice seed funding. At that yeah. time, it was, I was obviously a supporter of the foundation, but her, her friend Emily and Sam, they were like, the president, the vice president, and the secretary, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But they got all the 501c3 paperwork, all that. So they volunteered their time for however much time Gabriel had had left, put on a couple 5Ks, kept raising money. Yeah. Um, she passed. They asked me to be the chair. So then it was myself, Sam, and Emily. And they're both incredible people. We both, like, obviously the foundation, which it's great that like people are reactive to this like super healthy, beautiful, phenomenal person passing away young. Cause mm -hmm. I think it makes it real for everyone else. Right. But, um, 
the day she passed, Chip said whatever got raised, he was going to like match it to St. Jude's and match it to the foundation. And like, he ended up like matching like $1.5 million to each. Like, yeah. Um, which what a hell of a send off to heaven. Seriously. Um, Seriously. So it's kept going. We've hired an executive director, which is amazing. Alicia's phenomenal. So we have one paid staff and then we've expanded our board kind of to touch on areas like marketing and Mm -hmm. like, I don't know what my contributions are always (laughs) other than like, I know Gabriel's voice and I do know medicine Yeah, and I know like I've learned a ton about nonprofit and being the chair of nonprofit. So I guess now I feel like I know exactly what I'm doing, but if right. you ask me like right after she passed, it's like, I'm the chair of a foundation. Yeah, but exactly. You yeah. grow into it. You learn, you read like being a chair written for dummies. Whatever. Right. Right. So <laughs> what, what was Chip doing in Central Park that day where he was just chilling? Was he like <laughs> in, there for a business meeting or what was so he doing? He was at this like weird crux in his life where he and Joe, Joe was with him actually, because Gabriel, I ended up adding on again, and Gabriel popped back through and Joe was there. But um, they announced they were ending Fixer Upper that weekend. So he's like looking for his next thing, okay, which okay. was a marathon. And he was releasing Capital Gains, his book. Yep, um, yep. But in life, it's not like, he's like the nicest, most genuine human you could ever have in your corner. Like when Gabriel was sick in the hospital, he and Joe came to the hospital. Like when any weird anniversary comes up, he'll text me something incredibly heartfelt. Like if, and it's just weird. Like he's a friend. Like I've never looked at him as a celebrity. Right. It's like nice. Cause if he like tweets something about the foundation, $10,000 gets donated in a minute. Cause he has such a big yeah, following. Yeah. But yeah. He does everything very genuinely. And you, I don't know many celebrities or any celebrities. He's just a guy that puts his pants on one leg at a time and is a really good dad from what I know and a really kind human. I think that's what makes him such a good celebrity is that he is so relatable and the family and their show and everything. It's like, you can connect with them. They're just like the family down the street, you know, that's, that's super cool. Um, so for the, uh, foundation you have the like ongoing the 5k as well that's in september end end of september yeah so is that uh, that seems like it's a huge race now uh it's it's growing for sure yeah our virtual reach is incredibly impressive phenomenal like it's craziest thing was i when you like lose someone or you um like when gabriel passed away it's kind of like this blank empty it's like my i entered like this black hole but every like major publication in the world like she was in the newspaper in india and like melbourne Mm -hmm. australia and like all of it you never like would realize or think that would happen right that really i think expanded whatever the instagram reach and At the end of the day, I think a lot of her mission and a lot of her sayings, like our slogan of running on hope or Mm -hmm. her quote of like, it's okay to struggle. It's not okay to give up. Like those can resonate whether you have a bad day, whether you have a rare cancer, a non-rare cancer, Mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, just anything going on in your life. So we've been very lucky to resonate with a lot of people. Um, I think there's always work to do and I've gotten, I don't ever want to like not be a part of it. Like it's a huge part of my life, Yeah, but it is also all consuming. Yep. Like yep. it could be something that's 24 seven. So I've tried to push things on the back burner, but I still want to like really expand and push the voice. Like I think with rabbit, we're going to make like a little Rave Like Gabe collab based on one of her quotes and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, the 5K September 25th, um, we have a local in person race. And like our virtual race in the COVID year, we had like well over 2,000 participants. Yeah. And that's the only thing we do that um, goes 100% to adenoid cystic carcinoma, okay. her cancer. And then we write like $100,000 grants here and there to rare cancer research or institutions doing rare cancer research. And then 
Brooks has put out apparel and shoes for the foundation where that funds a fellow that's researching rare cancer. Yeah. And like to fund that fellow for a whole year, like she could cure like a leukemia it's or like, huge. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's all really cool. And there's a million foundations, a million reasons to give money. Just find something you're passionate about or believe in. Or find someone that sells a cool slogan like running on hope. Of course. And of course. Wear a shirt. Of course. There's nothing running on hope to me is like it's not that we're running. It's like your car runs on gas. Like uh, yeah, we're fueled exactly. by hope. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's r- running related or you can take it as not running right. related as well. No, total totally. Uh so what is your role then in like the selection of where the funds get allocated to? Do you play a big role in that or is it uh as uh, a chair we vote as a board. Um we do have committees, so I'm not in charge of but a big part of our like rare sa- cancer research committee and I think there's four or five of us in there and the committee when you have money like you can talk to any hospital like any yeah. everyone needs money of course yeah. Um, yeah so we've done work with like Sloan Kettering we've done work with University of Minnesota like there's a lab there and essentially it's all a work in progress but what would be ideal as if we got sent these proposals and then our rare cancer research group, which we will also have a scientific board that helps weigh in. Cause not that you want to go for like the lowest hanging, you want to make the dollars most meaningful or yeah, impactful. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, we'll pick maybe a grant and be like, this guy's having huge breakthroughs on this rare cancer, like sarcoma research. And then we'll present that to the board and it's like, should we write a hundred thousand dollar grant to this? And then we'll have stipulations. Like we don't want it to go to like hospital overhead fees. We don't want it to go. We want this money to go to like, if it's bench research to bench research, if it's like a clinical trial, it's a clinical trial. So you learn all that stuff when you work with the foundation. Yeah. Your profession certainly helps in you yeah, making those decisions. Yeah. Definitely. That's, that's awesome to hear. Last thing that I just remembered I wanted to ask you. So the, did Chip and Joanna like pimp out a, a, a van for you guys? And yeah. Yeah. Give, give us the details on that. Oh yeah. So there's a show on their new network, Magnolia Network or Discovery. They switched, they were on Discovery Plus forever. It's on Magnolia Network yeah, now yeah. where they're, building out this fan. There's also a really cool show on chip training for the marathon called Cur- called Courage to Run. But with the silo district marathon, the big marathon he puts on um, right pre-COVID. So I kind of got, I got the good end of the deal. Pre-COVID, Chip calls me and he says, I want to make silo district the next Boston. Like, what do we need to do? Like, you're going to be our contact for elites. And I'm like, sure. Like, I know like Desland and I know these handful of phenomenal marathoners yep. that could medal at an Olympics or win a Boston marathon and they'd all be happy to do it, but they have to like fit into their schedule and all that. And so I started building this group, but after we got the phone, I'd had this idea for a while since Gabriel passed, not expecting to have a kid and another partner <laughs> yeah, so soon yeah. after, but I was like, just get off the grid, train in this van, um, disappear for a while. So I was like, I've had this crazy idea. And he's also, I knew they wanted content because they have a network coming out. Yeah. That's 24 yeah. seven of their stuff. That's nuts. So I'm like, I am going to v- buy a sprinter van. Would you build it out? Like people are loving this. I think people would love a show about it. He's like, you get the van down to Waco, we'll build it out and make a show out of it. And now they actually, Chewy Van, who helped him with the van, they have their own show on the network that's inspired by that van build out, wow. which is really cool. Um, but, and he's so, I mean, Chip and Joanne are so nice. COVID delayed things a little bit, but he's like, the van's ready. Like booked me a flight down because they're just generous and nice. I drove down, booked me a flight down months later. We're chatting, catching up, do the reveal, and it's just immaculate. I mean, it's way, like, they really wanted, I kind of gave them a layout, but I'm like, I'm not a designer. Like, you guys are going to do something way better than anything I can even dream up. So I let them, like, kind of do clean slate, and they just made this beautiful 
super living a van. Now I've just got to get a baby seat drilled into the back. <laughs> You're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. I, I, van life is one that I've th- contemplated, you know, like not, not, I don't know how seriously, but it just seems super cool. And a lot of our listeners too, that like the big name in track and field, Craig Ingalls right now. Oh. And that's his thing is he like buys old RVs, renovates them, sells them. So Dude, it's I'm like, sure it's a big, crushes. it's a hot, it's a hot market right now. Oh, the very hot market. Chewy van. I, he's like probably booked out for 10 years. Uh, yeah. It's, it's nuts. Like, and like to get a sprinter van, they, and now like after COVID, it's 10 times worse, but I had to like, it would have been like a six month back order, but I like dropped Chip's name to my like Mercedes dealer and he's like, oh, we'll get you one ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. Which was super nice of him, but he's like him and his wife watch Chip and Joanne every night. Of course. So I'm of like, course. of course, everyone in the world watches them <laughs> and I'm the idiot that like had no idea. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, it's like the celebrities next door. They're yeah. just another family doing their thing. So totally. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks Justin for coming on. Yeah, thanks and, for uh, me. you know, if you, any, anything that you want to leave our listeners with, well, in the description, we'll have links to the brave, like uh, org and for donating, for getting swag, all of that good stuff. Any, anything you want to leave our listeners with or plug? Yeah. I mean, brave, like Gabe foundation. I personally think we do really good things. There's a million foundations you can donate to just, or like, and it doesn't have to be money. It can be time. It can be Mm -hmm. retweeting, Instagram sharing, but, um, all those things are important. And my biggest thing, I think living through a very perfect and beautiful life and then living through an incredible hardship. And now living in a perfect and beautiful life, but after loss, like just if people can, Amanda's tattoo on her leg is relentless forward progress. Like if you can just keep moving forward in life, there's going to be really, really hard spots in the foundation. It all goes hand in hand. Like just don't give up, keep moving and find something you believe in. If it's trail running, if it's beer miling, yeah, if yeah. it's bicycling or riding a horse, whatever, but find things you enjoy. Life's short and live it the best you can. Perfect advice. We'll be rooting for you in Chamonix. Best of luck. Great. Best of luck tomorrow. I guess by the time the listeners are hearing this, you've already completed the Silverton race, but uh, yeah, best of luck in Chamonix and we're rooting for you. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs>